look, when the clock strike, am I searching for the stoplight? Cause I'm 20 years in and I'm still working for the spotlight. Three easy ways to bring your dash back to life. Specifically for an NA or NB Mazda MX-5 Miata. Let's get right into it. What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel, Drive It Ryan. And welcome to today's video where I will be updating and upgrading the dash on my 1995 Mazda MX-5 Miata. So, it's about, if my math checks out, 27 years old now. So that's pretty old. And I think the previous owner was a smoker, so everything's looking a little yellow and crusty. And it just needs a little rejuvenation. So if you own an NA or NB Miata, there's a strong chance that you'll want to do all three of these things. First thing I'm going to do is the Kenwood head unit. In my last video, I installed brand new 3M Audio M800 door speakers. And I got kind of hounded in the comment section about not testing them out, but I didn't want to test them out with the stock radio and a stock radio station because it just wouldn't do it justice. But at the end of this video, I will turn it on and see how the speakers sound with the properly powered head unit like this one. Then I'm gonna go into how to replace your HVAC panel. We're gonna, and now this one's probably scratched. Nope, that's why I left the film on there. So I'm gonna replace this with a brand new OEM Mazda part. And then I'll show you why I have Velcro here on the side. Before we get started, it's a good idea to pop your trunk and disconnect your battery. So it's always good practice to take the negative off. First, unfortunately on the Miata, that one's further away. So be careful when you're doing this or you will set this off like the 4th of July. And you don't really need to take the positive off, but I'm going to. So we're gonna take this nasty dash apart. First thing you have to do is take all of this section out. So there's a screw on either side here. There's a screw down there. Oh, that's rusty. And then there's two here, just a regular Phillips head. And you're gonna to have to unscrew your super JDM Type R knob. You may have some wires connected under here for power windows and stuff like that. I have manual windows, but this one's just for a light, I think. Next, we need to remove the two vents from the tombstone because there's two screws behind the tombstone that will release everything. And if your vents look like Steve Buscemi's eyes and Mr. Deeds, then uh, you're probably gonna wanna stick around till the end of the video because I'm gonna show you how to fix these. Goosey gooseys. So there's a few different methods online about how to get these out. Some people snake a shoelace through there and just yank it out, but that leaves a strong chance of breaking something. If you look in here closely, you'll see a little slot right in here. So I'm gonna take a little flathead. I wrapped it in electrical tape just to prevent scratches. That's optional. I'm just a little psycho. And I'm gonna push it in there, right where the slot is, and I'm gonna twist it. And it might be tight because, who knows if this has ever been done. You know, what would help is probably a screwdriver that's bigger than a freaking inch long, get a little more leverage. So don't worry about screwing up the felt too much because we're gonna be Replacing that later. I don't know if this bottom one's gonna work. There's a slot on either side, so whatever works for you. Okay, well, that worked. That's not how it's supposed to come out, but that's how this one came out. See, just gotta twist and shout. This is how it's supposed to come out. Both whole thing should twist. Pull out like that. As always, the first one that I tried to film 
was the worst one. The other three, not that bad at all. But now that the vents are out of the way, you'll see the two screws up here. So there's one, two, and then down at the bottom left of the tombstone, there's a third screw. So take those out and try not to drop them. Helps if you have a Phillips with a magnetic head on it. Then you have a one clip to undo. And you're free. I'm gonna try this new PPPOV. It's quite the setup. Just four screws here. Now that the stock radio is out, we could go ahead and start to take the HVAC panel out. So these knobs each have tiny little Phillips head screws underneath them. And if they're like mine, they probably have a little bit of gunk in them. So take those out, real little guys. So I was looking at the new one. I saw that there's clips underneath here and over here. So I think I could just and clip this. Yep. And the plate comes out. I can take this knob out. Just pull back. And this is just an adhesive. Interesting. Let's start with the absolute easiest part to swap out of these three things in this video. And that is a brand new OEM Mazda HVAC panel. I will leave the link below so you can get it for yourself. It's about $35 and it makes a world of a difference in my opinion. The old one, it's yellowy and disgusting. And the new one is, well, I mean, it's just brand new. When you take the old one out, these are two separate pieces. And behind this is a little plastic I think it's like a light diffuser type piece but the new one comes already ready to go well not with that plastic piece but it has 3m adhesive on the back so i'm just going to peel this off and put that one on and then we're going to just snap it right back on there i think it's actually a little easier if you put this on first you can line everything up with the grooves get the grooves down here the grooves there and I can take this new plate and clip it on. Put your button back on. And ready, this is the most satisfying part. Oh, that's nice. Important step, don't forget it. Then don't forget about your little knobs with the world's smallest screws. All right, moving right along, we're gonna install a new head unit or a receiver, whatever you wanna call it. This is a Kenwood KDC BT378U. I like this particular model because, well, for a few reasons, but the main reason I like it is because you could change the colors to match the Miata gauges. I'm not a big fan of aftermarket head units at all. I almost put a double DIN in there because I think they look a little cleaner with just a flat screen, but the Miata is short on storage as it is. So I went with a single DIN and then I have a deep cubby that I'm gonna put in there to make it all work and look as factory as possible. But this is a simple Bluetooth receiver. You could still put your CDs in if you still run CDs. You could pair up to two phones as Alexa, Sirius XM, Overall, I mean, I had it in my last Miata. I loved it. It powered the speakers real nice. <laughs> I mean, it sounded pretty good. I'm not an audio guy. I don't care that much about audio, but this is a nice solution for $139 and it should look and sound pretty good. So if you hate wiring as much as I do, do yourself a favor and get yourself an adapter harness kit. 
It's seven dollars and it's well worth it. This is by Metra. These plugs plug into the factory Mazda plugs that came out of this stock radio here, here, and you just have to match up the colors. I'll show you in a second, and that's it. That'll make your life easier. You're gonna also want from Metra a universal antenna. If you want something brand new, this is also only a few dollars, so just get it and forget it. So you're gonna want those two things, and then this is the best cubby that I have found. I've used this before, and it fits nice and flush with the dash. It's not sunken in, it's not protruding, it looks right at home. This is by IL Motorsports, and I got it from Moss Miata. I'll put that link below too. Okay, well, let's open the box and see what we got. We have a microphone, so you can talk right into it. I installed this on my last car, but I'm not sure if I'm going to this time, because I never really used it. Ooh, that looks nice. One of the cleanest looking receivers that I've found. I know there's some guys who take the stock radios, right, and they send them out to get Bluetooth enabled and all that stuff, but this is all scratched up and faded and yellowing anyway, so just, just, it's not for me. Okay, let's see what the wiring looks like and we'll get this installed. This is by far my least favorite part, but it's pretty easy. Got the adapter harness there, the Kenwood harness there, and we just need to marry the two. So I got my schematic out and next thing you know, these two will be one. It ain't much, but it's honest work. <laughs> I got everything hooked up, ready to go. This end goes to the Kenwood. These go to the stock. Miata dongles. And that's it. And we got a ground. Basically, if you get that Metro harness, and this comes with the Kenwood, if you could see colors and read words, you could figure this out. And get yourself a little electrical kit, too. So my OCD striked again, and I got quite the little operation going on here. So here's the tombstone, right? And here's the Isle of Motorsports cubby that goes right behind the tombstone. So that fits in behind the stock tombstone and you could put four little screws in there, but you may notice the slightest, tiniest little gap at the bottom. I mean, barely. But I noticed that the stock, even the stock cubby, has a little foam there, probably to prevent it from vibrating and rattling and stuff, but it'll also fill in that gap. So, ow, to keep railing this recycling thing. So I'm gonna take some 3M double-sided adhesive tape. Uh, this is actually the same stuff that I used to put the lip on that car. I don't know why I panned over there, because the front bumper's downstairs. But I'm gonna put that on there and then Took a razor blade and I'm gonna reuse the factory foam off of this and I'm gonna put it right here. So essentially, it's how it would have came from Mazda. See what I mean? I like that. So after fiddling around a little bit, this is the winning combination of where the screw should be. No gap, looks perfect in the dash. I didn't realize that this back part, there's a little protruding slot that goes into this aluminum piece back there. So this thing is sturdy. Let's hope it turns on. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. I'm trying to keep this as short and to the point as possible, but there's a lot to cover and I don't want to miss anything. But now we're on the third thing that you could do to update your Miata dash. And, well, this is kind of more of a fix, but it's one of the most common problems for the interiors of an NA Miata. Droopy vents. They stay in place by friction, so inside of these vents are little felt pads, and they wear out over time. So we're going to fix that with some 3M Velcro. So it's sticky on one side, Velcro on the other. 
we'll show you how to take this vent apart. I know my hands are all dried and cracked. If anyone wants to send me some working hands cream, feel free. But take a little flathead screwdriver. There's um, little tabs in here, and you could just pry it, pry it away. So now we can pull the vent out, and you'll see the little felt pieces in here. And I'm just gonna go around and take the old stuff off. So just work your way around, get all the old stuff off. Whatever's left for sticky stuff, just get it with a goo gone or wash it in the sink, it doesn't matter. Then replace it with this. And if it's too stiff, you could use a razor. This was a tip by uh, Vincent on his YouTube channel. You could use a razor blade and shave this down a little bit or maybe an electric one and give this, give these a nice skin tight fade. Pro tip, do this before you cut it up into a million pieces for a tutorial video. If you wanna fix all four vents, all you'll need is about an 18 inch strip. It was $3.48 or something like that on Amazon. Again, I'll put everything below. I don't know how many times I've said that in this video, but four vents, four strips in each vent, 18 inches total length, so 18 divided by 16. You're gonna cut it up into about an inch and an eighth strips. But if you don't wanna measure it and do that kind of math, fold this in half once, cut it, fold it in half again, cut that, and then you cut each of these into four little strips for each vent. You should be good to go. That's it, I'm gonna do these all four and then we'll be ready to put everything back together, test the radio out. I know my car is disgustingly dirty. We'll test the radio out and see how the speakers sound. Got one done, so you'll end up with something like that. Ooh, that's tight. Right now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's turn it on and see how these M800 speakers sound with the new head unit. So right now I have it set to green because it matches the Miata gauges or I might switch it back to white if I get sick of green but you could go through there's tons and tons of colors to choose from. I already paired my phone it's very easy to do. See this is tricky on YouTube for one thing it's gonna be hard for you to tell what the speakers sound like because you know it's it's going through your speakers. But let's see how it how it sounds. Bluetooth. This is my buddy Leon. He's uh, a sick rapper. He's the, this is the song I use for most of my end screens. But if you see your end slow and you trying to get a benzo, I'll give your ass a game that it changed the way that you think, bro. Super skilled with the pencil, super ill in my mental. I reminisce on life. I'm my God, the bass is good. Get it through your tempo. I get on any tempo and give it all I got. I'm hot. I got like 10 flows trying to live on the 10th flow across some residentials that I own. Cause I know the life I want. I'm just setting it up. Removing those that's close who try messing it up. Wait for champagne toast with the relevant brush, like the sun. Leon, that line resonates with me more than you'll ever know. So, speakers sound absolutely amazing. Oh, uh, there's no rattles, the bass is incredible. I haven't even gone into the settings on the head unit yet, but I'm sure I could fine tune it. And uh, I would take you for a ride, but let me show you what's going on outside. Yep, this is winter in Connecticut. We still have rally cars out, ready to get it. So, that's it for this video. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I'll put Leon's, all his links and stuff below, and I'll put all the links for everything you need to do this job below. Click them, helps me, helps support the channel, helps me keep going. And I have a track day in one month at Lime Rock on the big course. And I gotta get one of these two cars ready. Thank you all for supporting. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.
And really, man, the focus is just leveling up. Cause I know the life I want, I'm just setting it up. Removing those that's close who try messing it up. Can't wait for champagne toast with the relevant bunch. Like, what's up? Yeah, uh, like, what you do, homie? What's your vision? How you thinking? How you move, homie?